day ladies and gentlemen this is dr frel your professor in research and social studies today our topic is on how to write your chapter one there are concepts that you have to consider in writing the first chapter of your paper one is the background of the study or the introduction part of your research. Second is the statement of the problem. Third is the significance of your study. And last is the scope and the delimitation of your study. So in writing this part of the first chapter, there are guidelines for you to follow. So here are the guidelines in writing the background of the study or the introduction part. First, you have to present your problem. Usually in the presentation of the problem, that speaks for what are you going to study in this particular research. Second is, is there exist an unsatisfactory condition regarding that particular topic? Or is there a fair problem that needs to be solved? So that you have to undertake such an investigation. So make sure to determine whether there's really an unsatisfactory condition or a problem that really needs to be solved. Then, the rationality of the study. You have to ask, why I have to do this? Is this problem really needed? So ask yourself, why? Then you have the historical background of your problem. What had happened in the past that you can use as basis in writing the rationale of your paper. You have to read something about your problem that maybe someone have written similar study in the past or there might be some instances where your problem existed somewhere in other local of a study. And of course, you have to have that desire to have a deeper and clearer understanding of that situation, that circumstance, or phenomena. As what we have had in our previous discussions, a problem should be within your interest so that you have that desire to solve a certain circumstance or phenomena that most likely interests you as a researcher. Or maybe you have that desire to find a better way of, say, doing something, or if you wish to improve a certain product, particularly in business, or a new way of doing things, no, not necessarily uh, depending on the usual way of doing such a thing. Or maybe you are but uh, interested due to your desire to discover something. Out of your research, you may discover a new thing, a new knowledge. So you might be that motivated to discover something new. And also included in the guidelines is the geographical condition of the locale of your study. What have interest you in that particular locale why you need to do that research in that area? So you can also mention that geographical location in the background of your study. And of course, you have to include the transitional phrase that will link 
your introduction to the statement of the problem as part of the first chapter of your research. Next is the statement of the problem. It follows the background of the study. So in writing the statement of the problem, there should be a general statement of the entire problem. And usually, this pertains to your topic, which is being uh, coined as the title of your study, followed by the specific questions or sub-problems in which your general problem is being broken up. There are also few guidelines in writing your statement of the problem that will serve as your basis in doing your paper. First is the general statement of the problem and the specific sub-problems should be formulated first before conducting the research. So the first thing for you to do is to state first your general problem to be followed by the specific sub-problems usually found in your statement of the problem. And customarily, this specific sub-problems are written in interrogative form. Though, there are also researches that uses a declarative form in a form of uh, objectives of the study. But in the case of our university, based on the format that we follow, you are advised to state your specific sub-problems in an interrogative form. The next is each specific question must be clear and unequivocal, meaning it gives only one specific meaning. So make sure that in stating your specific question, it is clear, it is unequivocal. So that in trying to find answers to those specific questions, there it will not be given different interpretation. The next is each specific question is researchable apart from the other questions. So in formulating your statement of the problem, you have to see to it that each question is researchable on its own. Answers to that question can be identified apart from other questions in your statement of the problem. Next is, each specific question must be based upon known facts and phenomena. The soy you cannot formulate your specific question without reading. You have to read, read, and read so that you will have some facts, basis in formulating your statement of the problem. Another guideline is that make sure that answers to those specific questions can be interpreted apart from answers to other specific questions. That is also related to the previous guideline of your in writing your statement of the problem. Then, of course, answers to each specific question must contribute in the development of the entire research problem or topic. So, as you uh, try to come up with your statement of the problem, you have to see to it also that each question will contribute 
in the entire research problem or topic that you try to answer. And as you sum up all answers to those questions, will give a complete development of your entire study. So by that, no part of your statement of the problem will be left behind because everything will be answered in order to give a complete development of your entire study. That's why it's a specific question should be related to your main problem. You might ask, how many specific questions are you going to include in the statement of the problem? So, the number is, is not actually uh, limited to two or three, but make sure that the number of your specific question is enough in order for it to cover the development of the entire research problem that you have. You can have three, you can have four, five, or more than five, let's say six, as long as these specific questions will be enough in order to cover everything that you wish to answer in your research problem. So class, those are the guidelines in writing the statement of the study. Next is the significance of your study. When we say significance, of course, we are trying to see whether that particular study that we wish to pursue has some importance, whether for the researcher, for the community, for an institution, or to the pool of knowledge. So there are also some guidelines in writing your significance of study. First is, of course, mention the rationale or the timeliness or, of course, the significance of your study. Ask yourself whether is this study timely? Do I need to do this now? or? Is this study important in the present situation? Second guideline is, will this study a possible solution to existing problems or improvement to some unsatisfactory condition? Because there's no use of doing a research if it will not solve or it might not give you some ways on how to solve an existing problem or to improve some condition which you think is unsatisfactory so far. Next is who will be benefited with the result of your research. So your study will give some benefit might be an institution, particular individual, a community, the local government unit or might be the school or whoever an agency that you think the result of your paper will provide them some benefits the next is will the result of your study will have some contribution to the fund of knowledge Will it create a new knowledge or will it reinforce an existing knowledge? So you have to think about that also. And next is, what is the possible implications of your research? Will it be useful or will it just be a waste of your time, of your money, of your effort? Doing a research will not, which will not provide any implication to the present situation. The next sub part of your chapter one is the scope and the limitation of the study. So in writing your research, you have to determine as to how this 
problem you have will be delimited. What will be the coverage of your paper and what part is not included in this study? So, similar to other parts we have mentioned earlier, writing the scope and limitations of your study has also some suggested guidelines. And one of which is that there should be a brief statement of the general purpose of your study. So usually, this pertains to the title of your research. The next is the subject matter and the topics to be studied or discussed. This is used when it speaks for your statement of the problem. Then third is the locale of the study, the place where you're going to do your research. Next is the population or the universe. Who will be the individuals to be included in your study as sources of your data? And of course, the last one is the period of your study as to how many months or how many years you're going to do this problem or this study that you have chosen. So, refer to your work text for the practical application of these guidelines and make, make it a point to present your activity to your professor. Thank you and good day.